Recording in progress. My friends, here we are again. I was expecting more of you. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> I'm joking. Thank you everyone for coming. Oi. Luke, mm. I saw you take a bit of a moment at the top of the ramp before you went down there. What was going through your mind before you made that wall? God damn, I'm grateful. I was trying to look for my mum in there. Ooh. Yeah, man, it's been a... It's a big moment for me, man. Get in there and, and put on the performance. You know, you listed the uh, promises that you've made during, and, the, and the predictions that you made during fight week when you spoke to us earlier. So, take them all off at the end. So, what did it mean to get that win and to do it with a finish against such a respected opponent like Yannick? It meant everything, man. I just had a moment with Yannick backstage. <clears throat> the respect I have for that man. I didn't want to disclose it. I didn't want to think about it during fight camp, but I saw an interview a few months ago of him. Like me, a flipping big softy man, crying. He has sons, you know. He puts all his life into this game. And he cried in the interview and he just showed nothing but emotion, man. And he lives the art of a samurai and I flipping respect that man to the end. So yeah, it was actually really hard for me to, to see him down. Normally, you know, I expect them to fall and, and I relish in, in the violence. This one was a bit bittersweet, but as I progress, I'm gonna fight men of the same caliber. I'm gonna fight men who fight for their families, put bread on the table. So I need to get used to that. I need to get used to hurting individuals who I respect. Um, so yeah, it was a moment. I was in that cage. I was, like I said, I was looking for my mom, for my sister, to let them know I'm all right. Looking for my granddad. You know, these guys have been with me from the jump. This is a moment for me, man. I appreciate everyone coming. I love Bellator for this. I love you, God. You're listening, he was with me tonight. Yeah, just relishing in the moment. This is big for me. I'm very proud of myself and proud of my team, my family, my pops have been with me from the very start. I flipping saw him tearing up a little bit, a little pussy, do you know what I mean? I, yeah, I'm joking, Dad. Don't beat me up, please, sir. No, but yeah, this is a big moment for me. You talk about moments, and uh, it's probably the first time a lot of the people in this arena had seen you fight. Mm -hmm. So, to go in and make such a big statement and to just stand in the cage at the end with your arms outstretched like that with eight to 10,000 people all on their feet. Um, so, has a star been born here at the Wembley Arena tonight? Sir, that's uh, in the eyes of the beholder, you know. I have nothing to do with that. I'm here for violence. I told you guys from the start of camp, from the start of this week, I said I'm here for war. I was ready to die in there. I was gonna come home with my shield or on my shield. Yannick felt. I come out the winner, but this is what I'm here for. If Bellator choose to re-sign me, this is what I will do every single fight. Ben Parrish, I called him out, I meant it. You're a savage, nothing but respect for you. You've been deemed the prospect killer after your last fight. I'm a prospect, let's put it to the test. I'm willing to do that every single time I step in that cage, put my life on the line. I'm here to provide for my family, to build a life for children who deserve it. This is what I do. You said that you had a hit list. Uh, so, miss. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Uh, why Ben Harris? Because, like I said, I have respect for the man. You see what he did to his last opponent. He's a savage. Everyone doubted him. He was a big underdog. And he, and he thrived in it. I looked to the better odds for this fight, and I was a huge favourite. I went in there thinking, I am the underdog of underdogs. The guy is nine and five. He is a tested veteran. He's fought across the globe for multiple world championships. I was going in an underdog. I was going in there with something to prove. I'm looking at Ben Paris, the exact same. He's a savage. I have to test myself against every savage in there. I want nothing but hard fights. I'm going to build. I'm going to be smart. But I want guys of my caliber or higher. I believe Ben is that man. I need to get out in the States. I need the cheddar. I need to fill the fridge with the bread. Um, and that's how I'm going to do it. I have to create my own, my own legacy. I have to build a narrative. Yeah, and gonna, Ben is my narrative. I was going to ask, because you said you're really keen to get over to the States and fight. Uh, you yeah. know, how much would it mean to you to be able to take a fight, you know, next in the States? And, and you know, 
do you think that will give you the opportunity to really show yourself to the American uh, audience? Yeah. You're, and that's no disrespect to the UK or Europe MMA, but you've made it once you get to America. America is the Mecca. America is the hub of MMA. Bellator run shows during Europe, but I know especially now since they've cut back their shows, most of their shows are running in America. My plan next year is to have minimum of four fights. I'm only going to do that if I get to fight out in the States. A couple of fights in Europe would be dope if I could come back to Wembley, put me on the main event, whoever runs the main event, whatever camera's my camera for that, you know, but I have to earn that. And getting out to the States is something I have to earn as well, but I believe that's where I'll build a bigger name for myself. That's where I'll be able to do more good in the world, so get me out of there. I need to see what my foot's saying. It feels broken, but I've got adrenaline in me right now, so we'll see. I'm shaking because of the coffee. I'm not crying again, I promise. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, once I'm, once I'm healed up, I believe I'll be ready to go by December, maybe January. Um, that gives him some time to prepare, me some time to prepare, put on another savagery performance. More war. I want more war. I want more, more opportunities to test my courage, to test my, my spirit. And I believe he's the man to do it. You've spoken about, you know, the greater good, you know, the that you want to achieve, mm -hmm. you know, with, with helping, uh, you know, children <clears throat> It does. It does. I fight for, I don't just fight for me in there. I fight for my family. But more importantly, this is the, I've said it before, my passion is MMA. I've worked my entire life to, to fight in MMA, to, to be the, the best savage I can in there. My purpose in life is to help. The only way I can do that is to build a platform outside of fostering, outside of childcare, so I can afford the, the means that I need. I, I can't just build a child's home like that. It takes funds. It takes a platform for people to donate, for people to get behind me. The only way I can do that is by building a platform here in MMA. I translate that into childcare. I build children's homes. I build lives and love for other children who don't have that, who deserve that. And the two go hand in hand. Savage in the cage, try and help others outside, so. What, what is the dream? What is the big picture? What, what is the goal for you? Yeah, right now, and it might be a low ceiling, but right now, I'd like to have a few children's homes across the UK to start with. I'd like to build, like I said it before, what my mum and dad have done for children is incredible. We looked after 30, uh, 37 children and we've been able to make a difference in their lives. They come from absolute trauma, from heartbreaking stuff. And we're able to provide that. Oh, do not cry again, sir. Hold it together. Thank you, dad. The things that my mum and dad have done for the children that we've looked after, I want to be able to do for other children, but on a bigger scale. We're only one family, and there's only so many foster families out there who can do that. If I build a children's home, I can create a staff of people, like-minded human beings who want to help, and we can get multiple children in. You know, foster families can only house as many children as their homes have bedrooms. Children's homes are designed to, to help those who don't get the opportunity to go to a family like my mum and dad. I want to be able to build something that can do just that on a large scale. 10, 20 children in one house. I don't know if you guys know, but Tracy Beaker, yeah. <laughs> similar to that. But I want to bring an ethos that martial arts has taught me, you know, to respect the elders, to, to flip in, thrive and strive to help other human beings and to carry that martial arts through your ethos as you grow. The children that we have now, they're going to be amazing human beings. That's because my mom and dad, Partly me and my sister have raised them to be a certain type of human being, giving them the tools to go and thrive and help others. It's the goal, man. To see a child leave your home loved, warm, welcomed into the world with that trauma behind them. There's no better feeling, man. I'm not going to cry again. I don't appreciate you trying to make me cry. <laughs> this, all right? Yeah, I'm joking. Two from me, if you don't mind. Mm. Now, you mentioned after the fight. My brother. <laughs> you mentioned after the fight, it was the first time that you've been hurt inside the cage. Mm. So what was it like to experience that? But... It was dope. I'll be honest, it's going to sound strange, but I got rocked the whole time. I was saying to myself, with my shield or on my shield, I'm, I'm prepared and I'm at peace to die tonight. If that's my life, that's my life. I've lived a great one. I got hit. I was like, ooh, tasty, go. I hit him. Ooh, he said, tasty, let's go. Then I knew it was back and forth. I said to my coach, I made a mistake. I should have slowed it down. In my mind, I thought, just savage, savage, savage. Try and hurt him, try and hurt him. And I saw punches coming and I rushed. In sparring, I would have said, whoop, slip, counter, slip, look, 
counter. Instead, I saw a punch and I threw a punch without thinking about it. That's not how you should fight. In sparring, I'm so calm. In here, I have thousands of people shouting my name, screaming, noise, the cage, the flipping re-signing of my contract. My coach is there watching, everyone's screaming. There's a lot going on. The more I fight, the more I'm able to slow things down. I see a punch coming, I take my time, boom. Like I could have finished him there, clean. Wouldn't have had to bust my foot. Wouldn't have had to get rocked. These are things I'm learning. You know, I'm five and oh. I'm five and oh, everyone. I don't know if you realize that now. Boy, let's flip and get it. But as I fight more, I'm going to be able to see that. I'm going to have the ability to see shots coming and fire when I need to fire. And not off panic, off choice. My coach, Mickey Papas, talks about choice. See a shot, choose. Relax. It's not there, it's not there. It's there, go. Instead, you go off what you think is instinct, but it's not, it's panic. So as I progress, I'm going to learn how to deal with that. I'm going to learn how to fight smarter, but this is a learning curve. Oh yeah, just two more. Sir. So, uh, this is the hard fight. Uh, right back and forth. What experience did you feel like you've learned from this fight as you just talked about? You just said I got rocked for the first time. I know what it's like. Iron. Do you know what I'm saying? Until it's not. Everyone has their day, but right now I'm granite. So I know I can take a punch. I know I can fight a man who's more physically imposing than me. I know I can use my elbows. I know I can teep someone in the face. I know if I kick someone's shin with my foot, it's a bad day for my foot. There's many lessons I've learned. So I know I can fight in front of thousands of people and it won't bother me. I know I can fight on home soil. Pressure, flipping. I learned a lot in this fight. And the last one is, I quickly want to read a quote from Errol Barney. It says, the Luke training office, we want to look real good guys in the sport. Happy for his success. Great win for a moment ago at the improvement five and So what's it like to you know, get recognition, recognition from Errol Barney? Yeah, Ariel keeps sliding in my DMs anyway. Before the fight, it was non-stop. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Ariel, you're a flipping legend. Um, no, he reached out to me after the Milan fight, wished me all the best, and he uh, mentioned me in his podcast at DC. It meant a lot to me, you know, as an up-and-coming fighter who looked up to him as a journalist. Um, hopefully one day I'll be able to speak to him in person or in his little Zoom call with his office. Flipping, that's a dream of mine. Want to tick off. But yeah, hopefully... The more we progress, the more interviews, big interviews like this, I'm going to be able to learn how to deal with that. The gift that a gab is important in this game, so. I'm sure you just pitched yourself uh, a video call with Errol Marley. So, you just Monday and Wednesday shows next week. I'm so. free for nine to five, Ariel. You know, be on my schedule, please. All right, not at New York time, but uh, <laughs> no, any time, sir, please. Fantastic, Fantastic performance. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Luke, you mentioned, obviously, that you're five and I was just very young in your career. Right? Sir. How do you intend to deal with pressure? I mean, you, you've taken up on social media tonight and talked with obviously not the jerk corner. So sure. how do you intend to deal with pressure? There's, there's a potential that you're going to be given the people by next. So sure. how, how do you intend to deal with it? Like I said at the start with the interviews in the week, <clears throat> there's there's pressure, there's real pressure in life. There's uh, you know, like I said before, there's a pressure of an eight-year-old girl coming to our house with the worst trauma you could expect and your job is to make sure she leaves your house loved and welcomed and with that trauma behind her onto a better family there's that pressure if you don't do your job a human being leaves your house the same that's pressure in here i'm either gonna die on my shield or i'm gonna come back on my shield two ways the pressure is there that's that's it i either win i lose i live i die i'm fortunate enough to have outside things that have caused larger pressure. This is my passion. I love this. I win, I lose, that's it. I'm at peace with losing. I'm at peace with winning. There is no pressure. Can someone please get me a bottle of water, Bobs? Thank you. My lips are so dry. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Sorry. Jake, a couple of questions from me. Sir, my man. Of oh, it's looking <laughs> I appreciate your line, um, sir. It's patching. <laughs> 16, I was growing this. Guys, all right, give me a break. I can take your mind back to the fight. Mm. The jab was working the tree. You look completely in control. You're taking so. him down and sacks his gas tank. And so. it looks like you're going to take him out towards the end of round one. Mm. So it was back to going back to your stool. What was going through your mind knowing that you might have been this close to the finish? How do you rein it back in and, and, and so. get your zen back for round two? It was weird. I, I think I'd caught the, I think I'd caught a leg and run, ran in with the leg. When we were training, the goal was to, once we get him down, to be violent. And I wasn't violent enough. It was, I can see Mickey smiling. I'm going to get an earful when I'm backstage, I know. But I could feel myself laying on him thinking, let's go. 
he won't do anything. Let's go. And it was little shots, little shots. I'd seen his last fight against Melvin and he was violent and put him away. And I thought any minute now I'm going to be violent. I didn't see the opportunity. I didn't go. Another thing where I need to, what I would have done in training, grab the wrist, pin the wrist, could be smash, put him away. I would have seen the shots coming, put him away. Here, I don't know. The, the noise stopped me from doing that. Major learning curve. I got him against with a body lock. In the gym, I take everyone down with a body lock. For whatever reason, I held him against the fence. Mickey again will tell me what I did wrong. I didn't go to number one. I didn't chain my wrestling. Again, when you're in there, it's hard because you've got so many things going on. I need to learn how to tunnel vision more. I've done it in previous fights, but I think I've had three fights in three years. Ring rust is real. The more I come, the more I'll be able to slow things down. But again, it's just a learning curve. I did what I need to do. I put them away. And first time, first time I put someone down with an elbow, I think I put him down. Did I hit the elbow when he fell? So what? <laughs> Muay Thai? <laughs> Come on. Shout out to Dave Fenson out there who helped me with my elbows for this camp. But um, yeah, so there's things I've done great. There's things I didn't do too great. Um, lots to work on. That's the beauty of this game. I'm always going to learn. He hit me with a spinning back fist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did, right? That was, yeah. Oi. No, I felt it. I felt it. And he smiled. And I was like, well, you got me with something. But, you know, when you're in there, it's like, yep, yeah, we're moving. But he hit me with a couple of shots. He hit me. I went southpaw. Didn't do what I was supposed to do. And he caught me first with a kick. I was like, damn, that's, that's what I was going to do to you, you cheeky boy. Um, so, again, there's loads of things I need to do better. Um, but we get the win. We move on. We re-sign. Cheddar, 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 wherever you're at. Scott Coker, Jude Samuel, please. A little bit more money would be lovely. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, things I need to do better. And then last one for me, you've talked to two moments. Once you've got the moment, there was a moment where you, like post fight, and you got the moment where you got the so mm. not meaning to make you cry, I promise. That's okay. The moment obviously with your old man when you get raised, talk to like what does it mean to you to have an old man in there mark you victory on to the next one? Everything. I've said it before, my dad is my hero. Um, I, uh, I've always said that if, if my son will look at me the way I look at my dad, honestly, man, it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing. You know, this is why I had so much respect for Yannick. I see him and his children. I had to, when I was scrolling through his Instagram and stalking him, I had to skip those photos. Cause I thought, no, 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 don't do that. He's good with his sons, put that out of your head. Fathers, man, you, uh, if you're listening, you're a dad, uh, you have so much responsibility. That's pressure. Being a dad is pressure. You know, you've got to raise another man to be a good man. I'm fortunate enough to have my dad as a good man. I can be like him. That's a moment. And I was in there looking for my mum and my sister. Been, when I was in leisure centers, they were right there. And I was like, Mwah, mom, dad, mom, LJ, I love you. There I'm scouring. I'm like, everyone looks like ants. Where are you at? You know, I must have looked like a weirdo trying to find flipping. I don't know who, but in, in the midst of it all, I saw them in the crowd. Those were the moments, man. And then I thank God, got down on my knees and flipping prayed again. But yeah, those moments mean the world to me, man. You know, of course, brother. Of course. And then just the last one. Okay, uh, we got again. The person you called out, Ben Parrish, uh, responded on his Instagram and said, under 30 seconds and making mistakes like that. Oh. Listen, I'm not a trash talker, man. Uh, you're a savage, brother. Let's go. Let's go, man. I have nothing but respect for you, bro. Let's, uh, like I said, he's a savage. Oi, he's a savage. He wants to smoke? Let's get some smoke, man. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Of course, guys. Thank you very much.